Welcome back, traders and investors. We have Peter Leeds. He is the publisher of the Peter Leeds Penny Stock, a popular financial publication in America. Peter, how are you doing today? Very well, thank you. Okay, so, I mean, I think we just got to go to one of the hottest sectors here that's been under a lot of scrutiny and uh, has a lot of penny stocks. Let's start talking about marijuana stocks. Yeah, well, I mean, there's a lot of uh, a lot of marijuana stocks in penny stock territory that are, you know, ramping up pretty high in their, their prices. They're absolutely, you know, financial train wrecks if you take a look deeper into their books. And I think that it's good to see that the SEC is finally uh, coming around and halting some of these companies and keeping a closer eye on them. Peter, when you look at the companies and you say financial train wrecks, there's, there's a lot of them that obviously have been halted. Is there any plays, though, uh, that you're looking at that are potential long-term? Because with this industry and sector kind of emerging here uh, with a lot of the regulation changes, um, it's more of kind of like, you know, find, find the best one to go, uh, go long on that can actually take the industry. Well, the way I look at it is that there's way too much attention in this space. And so there's a lot less opportunity for investors to make money. But there's a tremendous amount of risk. You've got all these companies that are tens of millions of dollars in debt. They're losing tens of millions of dollars every quarter, and they've got nothing to show for it except for a ridiculous uh, market cap. You know, you've got companies that were worth almost $800 million that, you know, you know, they're starting to come back down, which is to be expected. But I think that there's a lot more downside uh, to go from here. And I think the problem with that is that, you know, even if you're picking the good ones, you're probably still going to lose if you're getting in at these overvalued prices. Yeah, the, the sector's been absolutely smoked as of late. Jake, you're welcome for that pun there on your last day. Uh, wh where do you see it going in the short term, and where do you see regulation here with a lot of these stocks uh, coming up? Well, in the short term, I think that the, the stocks themselves, you know, they should be trading lower than they are typically, uh, you know, across the board. Um, and, you know, in the short term, anything can happen. So if the hype ramps up again, the price will go back up. Um, and in terms of the regulation, it's a matter of time until the regulation kicks in. When that happens, we're going to see that the whole concept becomes more uh, um, uh, acceptable. And when that happens, you're going to see more states following Colorado's uh, uh, lead and, and Washington state's lead. And what happens then is you've got uh, uh, bigger companies, bigger players, multi-billion dollar companies that are going to say, okay, now it's okay for us to step into this industry. And they're going to come down and probably wipe out all of these fragile little players. Okay, so you're you're staying uh, you're staying away. Is there any of these penny stocks in the marijuana sector that uh, you know it has some potential, or are you just staying away from all of them? Well, I'm staying away from all of them, and I think other people also should stay away. There's you know there's a few companies that I consider to be legitimate. You know, like Grow Life. Uh, the ticker symbol is PHOT. I wouldn't get in anywhere close to these levels, but they do have actual revenues, uh, and even though that they're you know, taking on pretty big losses, there's a chance that they could turn things around and get it going. But in general, I mean, any investor looking to get involved in this stuff, you're putting yourself at, at risk because everybody's already, you know, the time to get involved was a year ago, not now. Well, well you got high risk, high reward in, uh, Peter. I, you know, I, I don't agree that it's still not a time to get in just because I think that there's a lot of upside if we can find the right companies here. I think that the SEC getting involved and, you know, forcing companies to, you know, report a lot better and hopefully start uplisting. And I think I can't remember which ticker, but we heard that one of them is uh, just announced they're trying to uplist this past week as well. Um, what, what do you think are any other um, ancillary benefits here or different plays to look at the MJ sector? And do you see this as any significance to a different kind of emerging sector like solar or, or anything like that in the past? Well, there, it's very similar to solar. It's also similar to the gold rush out in California or the Dutch tulip bulb mania, you know, or the dot-com bubble. Right now, there's just people throwing money at the sector, and they're not looking into the companies themselves. And I've looked at every single marijuana-related company, and a lot of them, you know, I could tell you what, before I even look at their financials, what kind of financial position they're in. And then I go and I check, and I go, okay, so it's exactly like I thought, uh, you know, 
in the in the short term, long term, the way it's going to work out with these companies. I mean, it's there's there's no difference between this type of business or any type of business. If they're wasting, you know, losing money and they got a massive bleed rate, at the same time they're having trouble getting their revenues going. That's gonna. There's only one way that that's going to end, and that's why I say. You know, some of these companies, you know, they might, you know, increase in, in share price in the short term, but in the long term, their best hope is to be, you know, either, you know, bought out by someone or reinvent themselves. I mean, there used to be hundreds of car companies in the States, and now there's three. So this is the game you're playing. Like, your odds are so stacked against you that it's uh, dangerous. Okay, so what do you look at? I mean, you you talk, you know, when you're analyzing penny stocks here, I mean, so you're open to pink sheets, OTC stocks, you're open to anything. So what are your criteria for purchasing a company and what what, what do you look for? That's a great question. And I got to clarify that uh, we don't look at pink sheet stocks ever. Okay. There's, you know, it's too easy to get listed there. The first thing I do when I look at a company is I'm going to be going to the balance sheet, make sure that they got enough uh, assets over their liabilities just to stay in business for a year. And then beyond that, um, and then I start looking at, you know, are the revenues increasing? Is your management team good? And was that management team done before? We're looking for debt loads. We're looking for uh, uh, financial ratios. We're, we're basically taking a look at almost every aspect of a company and we're looking for what is, you know, the best, best, uh, uh, as, uh, criteria to look for. And, uh, you know, and when I'm looking at these marijuana stocks, it was actually kind of, uh, disturbing to me to see how bad of shape that they're in, uh, especially when I look at, you know, I look for companies that are fundamentally solid. All right, Peter Leeds here of pennystocks.net. Folks, if you're interested in learning more about his service, I will drop the link into the chat right now. Um, Peter, that, that's really important when it comes to penny stocks, and we preach a lot about risk. How do you teach your subscribers um, you know, what, what is risk and, and how to handle it, especially with these kind of stocks? Well, the first thing I do is I say, you know, stop. Most people uh, – uh, get involved and the first thing you want to do is like give me a ticker symbol and I'll throw money at it. I said, no, no, don't do that. What you should do is take it slowly, you know, invest on paper, learn the game first. Um, and you're absolutely keeping your investment levels low. Not that I'm giving financial advice to anyone, but you, you want to keep your, your investment levels low and use only risk money. And um, you want to do it smart. I mean, my, in my estimation, about 95% of penny stocks out there are absolutely horrible. Investments are pretty, you know, not in compelling investments. So we got to try and find the 5% that are good quality companies that are trading for pennies a share just because they're uh, overlooked or undervalued. And usually those turn out to be uh, pretty well, pretty good. And over time, they rise to the top. Uh, so what's on your radar right now? Uh, well, we're, we're looking at a, a, a lot of uh, technology companies and we're looking at, uh, um, you know, we've got our, actually our, our quick fix report is coming out uh, Wednesday, which is 10 stocks that are undervalued, undiscovered and under a dollar. And those are, you know, from all sorts of different industries. Um, but, you know, uh, some of them are in more uh, con conventional industries and some of them are more in the technology sort of cutting edge and we're looking for you know anything that we think is going to be able to double or more from here and that's what we're looking at okay uh, coming out of the ticker here we have a, a stock amslf are you familiar with that one at all uh, no, but I can tell you it's a foreign company that's what the f is for at the end um, I, I assume that's on the pink sheets right I think so. It's uh, Flight Aerospace Solutions, ordinary shares out of Canada. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, no, I'm not familiar with it. Peter, that, this is a good question, though. With something like that and with our, our traders that you know might be looking at penny stocks, how would you start, especially with a company like this, to start evaluating a company that you found, maybe you know off a forum or something? Um, well, you know, that's one thing you don't want to do is get your stock picks for free. Like if you're getting a, you know, a, a mail out sent to you or you're reading better on a message board or something, understand that with penny stocks, there's always a hidden motivation behind the person who's pushing it or telling you about it. Um, you know, but if I did see a stock that for some reason I wanted to take a look at or if someone asked me about it, like I said, the first thing I would do is I would, you know, uh, go to the financials. I mean, if it's on the pink sheets, I just discount it right away. But if it's, uh, you know, go to the financials and make sure that they actually have revenue growth and that they're uh, able to sustain themselves. And then you look at, you know, market share, is that growing or decreasing, you know, is, is, and is the market 
itself going to grow uh, on a universal perspective. Um, and you, I mean, it's it's not rocket science. It's all pretty straightforward. It just takes a lot of work. And uh, unfortunately, I've seen that most investors in penny stocks don't do the the amount of work they need to do to actually uh, turn a profit. And if they did put that work in, at the end of the day, they they'd be up way more uh, financially over time than. Uh, these people are basically, you know, taking a chance on stuff and they throw, you know, 500 bucks in something and hope it turns into 10 grand, you know, that sort of thing. Now, can you explain real quick, you keep mentioning the pink sheets for all of our uh, newer traders. What, why not trade the pink sheets and what are the, you know, it's not the NASDAQ and the NICE. Can you explain the different exchanges here for what pink or for penny stocks trade on? Yeah, absolutely. The, the pink sheets, it's technically not even an exchange, but uh, it's very easy to get listed there. So uh, what happens is it's a, sort of like a magnet for a lot of companies that aren't as legitimate. So almost every company that's listed on the pink sheets is there because they can't list on a better exchange. Um, you know, and the same for the uh, the uh, uh, over-the-counter QX exchange. And there's a few like OTC exchanges that are, uh, um, that are you know, basically they, they – our conglomeration of a lot of you know low-level companies. Um, then you get into the OTCBB, which is over-the-counter bulletin board, which is actually a subsidiary of the Nasdaq. And then as you go up that and up, it's usually pretty good because they have reporting requirements, so investors can take a look at what the financial position is. And then you know you can look into the Amex, the, some some penny stocks around the NYSC um, and Nasdaq as well. Most oh. of the companies we look at are on the bulletin board. Okay, so are you following this uh, Bitcoin saga and all? And if so, what's your take? Uh, I've followed it very closely, actually, and uh, I've made a few comments on it. Um, when it was uh, trading at uh, $1,200 uh, $1, per Bitcoin, I was saying to a lot of uh, media and that sort of thing that, you know, this is, again, no different than the Dutch tulip bulb mania and the California gold rush, like I said earlier. You know, it was a mania and everybody, uh, you know, was just throwing money at it because they thought it was a great idea. And, yeah, sure, it seemed great if it was increasing in value. You know, if you buy a pile of dirt and a, a, a week later it's worth twice, twice as much, um, the problem is eventually – it's a pile of dirt and the smoke clears and you see what you've got. And that's why the price came down so strongly. You know, the mania sort of faded away. Um, you know, long term, is Bitcoin a good idea? It's a great idea. Um, but I said from day one, this is about a year and a half ago, I said, there's no regulation yet and no taxation, but that will happen. It will occur. And since then, you've seen that there's been all sorts of regulation and taxation being applied to it, which basically takes away the the whole benefit of Bitcoin in the first place. So, uh, so buy, sell, or hold? Oh, I would sell, but I would, you know, not a strong sell. I mean, it's. I think it's probably fairly valued right now. I think that uh, it might, you know, increase a little bit over time. But you know, most of the the mania and most of the gains that you know was was compelling to invest in Bitcoin, that's already passed. And now it's a question of whether or not you believe in the technology and the concept, uh, in which case then maybe it's something fun to invest in, but I don't think you're going to get rich off it. All right, Peter Leeds here. Uh, Peter Leeds, or I'm sorry, uh, pennystocks.net, uh, the the authority on penny stocks. And this show, remember, is brought to you by Options House. Get 150 free trades, commission-free trades when you click the banner up top uh, and fill uh, open a new account. That's exclusive through the Benzinga pre-market prep show here. All right, Peter, we're going to ask you one more question here. We want to get some great trading ideas. That's what this show is all about. Uh, what do you have for us that we can give to our traders to look at? Oh, yeah, if you just bear with me one second because – we're just putting together this report uh, that I was talking about earlier. There's a, a whole bunch of great uh, ideas here. One sec. Uh, and I'll drop the, uh, if you guys are interested in learning more about uh, Peter, I'm going to drop the link one more time into the chat so you guys can check out his, uh, his site. Yeah, sorry. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. We, we will, we, we wait, we wait. For uh, for trading ideas, this is Peter, such no this is such a jam packed show that like it gives the listeners a break when we have a little bit of pause in it. But uh, I after yeah. after you do this, I have one more question for you too. 
Yeah, I, I apologize because I'm looking at about 150 stocks a week, and so uh, you know, and then I rank them on a short list. Like these are, you know, on the first level, short list, second level, and then I got to go back and take another review. I mean, you, some of the companies that that we're looking at are SCLN, uh, QTM, you know, uh, uh, we're all sorry, SMTX. But I mean, like I'm telling you, these are just tickers off of a basically a spreadsheet of about 150 of them. So I mean. Uh, if you ask me, you know, what's the revenues of this company, I'd have to look it up. Peter, what a, real quick, how do you how do you screen for these, or how do these pop up on your, your list? Well, that's a, we start with a massive screen where we take off all the stuff that is, you know, foreign companies and pink sheet stocks, companies that aren't trading, don't have a, a strong market cap and low revenues. And then we basically, I mean, it's it's this simple. We actually literally go through one by one and we look for companies that are in certain you know industries that we like like you know we're uh, we're you know so we're actually doing all the work where we go through them one by one and quickly screen them off like if, i mean if a company is based out of china we are trying to avoid that right now so we just cross it off and i mean it, no matter how aggressive you are with you know getting rid of these companies off your list there's there's so many to choose from that you don't have to worry about the ones you get rid of. You're just looking for those gems, you know, those, those diamonds in the rough. Um, and then we put it onto our second level shortlist where we give it a deeper review. And then finally we go to our third level shortlist where we're actually, you know, calling management and we're looking deeply into the company. And these are the cream of the crop among penny stocks. These are the companies that we feel absolutely confident in in their uh, their financial position, the fundamentals, and we expect the prices to go a lot higher. You and I, I don't know if we already touched on this. I mean, if you find a, a penny stock and do you, you don't short them though, right? Do you do any short recommendations? Because like with uh, the way you talked about the marijuana stocks and some of these other things, if you know if you think there's no redeeming value in them, do you do you ever short the issues? Uh, no, we do not recommend shorting. It's you know not necessarily a good uh, strategy for investors. It's not very safe. Um, and we just recently did a broker review of all the discount brokers, which we published uh, uh, publicly. Um, and we asked them all about specifically, you know, can you short penny stocks? That was one of the you know 20 questions we asked them, and we got details on it. And you know, about half of them don't even allow it. The other half allow it, but they have all sorts of regulations and extra fees and that sort of thing that kind of makes it, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, not compelling to do it that way. Um, you know, so we've, uh, we've been trying to avoid that and steer people away from it. Okay. All right. We've had uh, Peter Leeds on here and he follows penny stocks. Peter Leeds penny stocks is a pie, popular financial publication sold over 35,000 subscriptions in six continents. Boy, you must know a lot of languages. <laughs> well, I know one. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it. It's good to get a perspective on these stocks and uh, we'd certainly like to have you back on again. I'd love that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Peter.